easing is typically found on a garment such as on the cap of a sleeve here where the sleeve is cut bigger than the armhole or arm side and then the sleeve we need to kind of shrink it in to fit that armhole because we need that extra fabric around the shoulder it has been eased in to that armhole and I'll show you how to do an ease stitch so I've got two pieces here this one is cut one inch or 2.5 centimeters shorter than this one and the one that is longer or what would be typically the sleeve on a garment I'm going to do a line of stitching just at my seam allowance line so at the 15 line or the 5 8 line and I'm going to be using the long stitch length of five millimeters good so I'm going to start a little way in just where you know um, maybe it will just be the center part that would be eased in like the cap of a sleeve I'm not doing a back tack and I'm not going to cut my threads short. So when I pull that out, I can take that thread and I don't want to have puckers like this happening because I'm not gathering this. I'm just easing it in. So I'm just trying to shrink this piece in a little bit. So I'm trying to remove any puckers. I want the fabric to be smooth along the sewing line. I'll go back to a standard stitch length now and join these two together. I can't ease in that full inch. I can only ease in a little bit. It's, on some fabrics, you can ease in a lot more. Like on a wool, you could actually ease this in and press that and get rid of all those little bumps. It would just like shrink it would just shrink in and it would it will just eases beautifully something like this like a cotton doesn't really have too much flexibility in how much it will ease now there's a bit of a debate you could have it with the bigger side up so that you can see any dangers like that i don't want to have a pucker in there so there's can kind of push that around get that get the fullness evenly distributed that's one uh, reason why you might want to sew with this side up just so you can see what's happening here but I think there's an even better reason to sew with this side down and that is because the feed dogs on the machine will help to ease that in it'll help to kind of move that fabric along so with the bigger side down and a normal stitch length now. I can feel in each section if it's smooth or if there's any little bumps or puckers. And if there are any bumps, I can fix those before I sew over them. I can kind of hold back on the top. I can. If I put some tension on it and hold back and don't let it go through, then those feed dogs are going to be kind of grabbing that fabric and moving it along. Take out your pins at the last minute so that your fabric stays where you pinned it. Don't let the extra fabric travel to the next section and start to build up. Here I'm just lifting up my needle because I can feel there's a bump there. And I'm just going to try to work that out before I sew that section. So then you check it over and if you do have any little puckers, sometimes you can just work them out by hand and press that flat. Sometimes though you do need to go in and unpick a little section and fix that little pucker, but we'll see if we can fix that on the iron. Good. So that actually looks pretty good. The basting or the gathering stitch now has done its job and I definitely don't want it to show so I can pull that out. And then I want to push the seam allowance out toward the fuller piece.
you can use your tailor's hem for this because we are trying to build in that shape. Find where find a place on the tailor's hem where it molds around. If this was a wool, I wouldn't worry about that little pucker at all. It would just it would just shrink right in. So that's ease. You can see that this piece has been shrunk in to fit that piece. 